Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi, and this lecture pertains to laboratory hematology and platelet disorders of hematology and transfusion medicine board review made simple. Quick review. Sensitivity is the ability of a test to detect a true abnormality good for screening. Specificity is the ability of a test to detect a normal result if the abnormality is not present good for confirmation of disease. Positive predictive value is the likelihood that an abnormal test indicates a patient with the abnormality. And negative predictive value is the likelihood that a normal test indicates a patient without the abnormality. Examination of the peripheral smear. First look at low power, 10 times, to scan for platelet clumps and nucleated cells along the lateral edges. Then, higher magnification, 50 or 100 times, look at the transitional area between the thick part of the smear and the feathered edge, where only a few cells overlap. Marrow, aspirate, and biopsy. Good quality smears require adequate spicule harvesting because perispicular areas are where the most representative areas exist to examine. Bone marrow aspirate is required for cytogenetics and marrow differential. Tube collecting cytogenetics should be collected in a sterile tube containing tissue culture mediums such as RPM1, containing fetal bovine serum and one glutamine, and anticoagulant. Flow cytometry, used for detection of cell surface proteins using fluorescent labeled monoclonal antibodies, aminophenotyping or the assessment of DNA content using DNA binding dyes. Forward scatter measures cell size, and side scatter measures internal cellular granularity. Lymphocytes have the lowest forward scatter and side scatter signals. Monocytes have intermediate forward scatter and side scatter. Neutrophils have high side scatter and low forward scatter. This may be used, for instance, to detect prognostic markers such as ZAP70 and CLL. Hematopoiesis immunophenotyping, crucial to know for hematologists. Uncommitted hematopoietic progenitor stem cells are CD34 positive. In myeloid differentiation, CD33 is the earliest antigen to appear, followed by CD13, 14, and 117. Erythroid maturation characterized by appearance of CD71 and CD235A and loss of CD33. Megakaryocyte differentiation indicated by CD41, which is a glycoprotein 2B, and CD61. NK cell differentiation indicated by CD56 and CD57. Monocyte differentiation indicated by CD11, 14, 15, and 64. B and T cell lymphocytes express TDT and HLADR. B cell maturation is indicated by CD10, 19, and 20. T cell maturation is defined by CD3, 4, 7, and 8. CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, be CD20 positive, CD5 positive, CD23 positive. Mantle cell would be CD20 positive, CD5 positive, plus CD23 negative. We'll have the translocation 1114, cyclone D1. Marginalisome lymphoma will be CD20 positive, 5 negative, and importantly, 43 positive. Classical Hodgkin's will be 15 positive and 30 positive, 20 negative. Follicular lymphoma will be 10 positive, 5 negative, 23 negative. Translocation 1418, the BCL2. Hairy cell leukemia, you absolutely must need to know, 25 positive and 103 positive. So if you see pancytopenia with 103 positive cells, then carry cell leukemia. Lymphoplasmocytic lymphoma, this is the Walden from 20 positive, 38 positive, 138 positive. Myeloma will be CD20 negative, 38 positive, 138 positive. The difference between the two will be the CD20. <clears throat> Acute B cell lymphoblastic leukemia, the blasts are virtually always positive for TDT and variably express the B cell markers 19, 20, 22, and 79. And leukocyte common antigen CD45, 
and very importantly, the common acute lymphoblastic leukemia antigen CD10, which is CALA. T cell markers such as CD3 will be negative. And the constellation of antigens identified defines a stage of differentiation, ranging from earliest to latest. So the precursor B cell ALL will be CD10 positive, the CALA, 19 positive, 34 positive. The mature B cell, the Burkis, will be 10 plus or minus 19 positive, but importantly 20 positive, 22 positive, 25 positive, and surface immunoglobulin positive. T cell prolymphocytic leukemia PLL will be CD3 positive, 7 and 56 positive. T cell large granular le leukemia LGL again CD3 positive 7 8 16 positive NK cell leukemia remember CD56 peripheral T cell lymphoma CD3 4 5 7 positive and importantly CD30 positive angioimmunoblastic lymphoma usually T cells will be CD3 5 7 positive but CD30 negative anaplastic large cell lymphoma Again, T cells, CD3 positive, 5 positive, 7 positive. Very important, CD30 positive. And brentuximab, as we know, has just been approved for this indication. Remember, ALK positive anaplastic large cells have a better prognosis than ALK negative. That's translocation 2.5. Fluorescent and cytohyperization fish. A cytogenetic technique that uses specific fluorescently labeled DNA probes to identify each chromosomal segment. Centromere-specific probes are used to detect monosomy. Chromosome-specific libraries can detect translocations more sensitive than cytogenetics. Southern blotting. DNA is extracted and digested. The digested fragments are run through a gel and separated by size and transferred to a membrane. Probes hybridize to the desired complementary strand. Northern blotting, same technique except for RNA. Western blotting, same technique except for protein. Sickle cell screening, the sickle dex test. Manual qualitative method to detect hemoglobin S on turbid solution when blood containing hemoglobin S is added to a solution containing a reducing agent. The deoxygenated hemoglobin S forms tactoids that diffract and reflect light, whereas non sickling hemoglobins remain soluble. Biggest take home cannot differentiate hemoglobin SS versus hemoglobin S traits via the sickle dex test. You may also obtain false positive tests if there's paraprotein present. Do not request sickle dex tests for infants less than six months old due to high false negatives due to a low concentration of hemoglobin S in infants less than six months old. And if test is positive, again, need to confirm with hemoglobin electrophoresis. Red blood cell abnormalities on the peripheral smear. Acanthocyte, think liver disease, A beta lipoproteinemia. Basophilic stippling, lead toxicity. White cells, Jesus P deficiency. Burr cells, uremia. Halajoli bodies, postplanectomy. Pappenheimer bodies, acidoblastic anemia. Schistocytes, DIC, prosthetic heart valve, burn, TTP. Spherocytes, hereditary spherocytosis, hemolytic anemia. Target cells, thalassemia, hemoglobin C. Teardrop cells, myelofibrosis, and MDS. Platelet disorders. Platelet alpha granules contain proteins such as beta thromoglobulin, platelet factor 4, fibrinogen, factor 5, factor 13, bone mullerine factor, and growth factors. The platelet dense granules contain proteins such as ADP, ATP, serotonin, and calcium. Following vessel injury, platelets adhere to the subendothelium of the interactions of a plasma protein, bone mullerine factor, and a specific glycoprotein complex on the platelet surface, the glycoprotein 1B-9. Following initial adhesion, Granular release causes the recruitment of more platelets, resulting in aggregation. That's fibrinogen binding to receptors 2B3 ion platelets. Also, activation of platelets causes exposures of a negatively charged fossil lipids on the cell surface, which then drives the coagulation cascade. Thrombopotin is a hormone which drives platelet production. Immune thrombocytopenia purpura. 
Eight-year-old boy recovering from a viral URI presents with purpura and petechiae, no splenomegaly. If patient has splenomegaly, then think of other disease entity. Normal WBC, hemoglobin, platelet of 8,000, not taking any medicines, normal PT, PTT, and creatinine. Primary ITP is a common cause of thrombocytopenia in both adults and children. Secondary ITP occurs as a result of drugs, autoimmune states, hepatitis B and C, HIV, H. pylori, hypersonism, and vomilibran disease type 2B. Bleeding typically is mucocutaneous in nature and occurs if platelet count is less than 30,000. Maybe due to platelet destruction by anti-2B3A and anti-1B antibodies as well as decreased platelet production. Always examine the peripheral smear to exclude pseudothrombocytopenia and platelet bumping due to EDTA or TTP or DIC looking for cystocytes or other hematologic disorders. Check TSH as underlying thyroid problem may cause thrombocytopenia. Only perform bone marrow biopsy if another cell line is low, there's anemia and leukopenia, or patient not improving with standard treatment, or if patient has splenomegaly, bone marrow biopsy will show a normal number of megakaryocytes in ITP. Treatment in children, usually self-limiting, so supportive care, but if platelet counts less than 30,000, then consider steroids or IVIG. Try your best to avoid splenectomy in children. In adults, disease usually will persist and relapse. Treat if platelet count less than 30,000, or if less than 50,000 in patient bleeding. Prednisone, one milligram per kilogram, then taper over two months, and if patient bleeding, then consider methylprednisolone, one gram intravenously over two to three days in IVIG. Or if patient is RH positive, consider Winro. Rituximab, 375 milligram per meter squared IVQ week times four weeks, splenectomy, if disease persists, and thrombopoietin agonist, romidespin and plate administered subcutaneously, while a trombopact administered orally. Drug-induced thrombocytopenia, case report. A 65-year-old male presenting with petechiae, purpura, and platelet count of 15,000 admits to drinking, quote-unquote, one alcoholic beverage per night. Normal WBC and hemoglobin, no schistocytes, or pseudothrombocytopenia, or spherocytes on smear. Further questioning leads to discovery that patient drinks gin and tonic. Many drugs cause thrombocytopenia, the most common of which are quinine and quinidine, present in tonic water, bitter melon, and certain medicines. Also vancomycin, NSAIDs, sulfamethoxazole, anticonvulsants, sedatives, 2B3 inhibitors, gold, and brocanamide may cause thrombocytopenia as well. Suspected of an acute thrombocytopenia. Epitope targets of these antibodies usually reside on 2B3A or 1B. Usually occurs seven days after drug exposure, except the 2B3A antagonist, which can cause acute thrombocytopenia sooner than seven days, due to circulating natural antibodies against them. Treatment, stop the medicine. If severe thrombocytopenia and patient bleeding, then stop the drug and transfuse platelets. Other acquired platelet disorders. One, myeloid proliferative disorders. Abnormal platelet stem cell clones, which can either overactivate, causing thrombosis, or underactivate, causing bleeding. Uremia, impaired platelet vessel on interaction. Dysproteinemia can cause platelet dysfunction. Antiplatelet antibodies cause decreased survival of platelets and may even cause platelet activation in the case of it. Drugs such as aspirin, NSAIDs, fixamab, even penicillins and SSRIs may inhibit platelet function, so wait seven days prior to performing platelet aggregation tests of patient on aspirin, and SSRIs may inhibit uptake of serotonin in platelets and decrease activation. Cardiopulmonary bypass, platelet activation by exposure to artificial surface. Acute promyelocytic leukemia, platelet activation by cytokine release. Inherited platelet disorders. 
the most common characteristics of these patients are abnormal aggregation responses and an inability to release intracellular granule contents upon activation of platelet-rich plasma with agonists such as ADP, epinephrine, and collagen. In aggregation studies, the second wave of aggregation is blunted or absent. bernard Salier syndrome, case report. Six-year-old male presenting with easy bruising of CKI, platelet count of 130,000, and platelets appear large. This is the key word. If you see a large platelet, think bernard Salier. Normal PT, PTT, factor eight, one lower rate activity, and prolonged waiting time. Abnormal aggregation of ristocetin, but normal aggregation of collagen and ADP. Platelet function disorder resulting from an abnormality in the platelet 1B complex, which mediates the binding of one lower brand factor to platelets. The flow will demonstrate decrease in 1B receptor. So remember, large platelets, prolonged bleeding time, abnormal aggregation of ristocetin, GP1B. The treatment, be cautious with repeated platelet transfusions as it may cause antiplatelet antibody formation and recombinant factor 7 of facial bleeding. Glansman thrombocenia, case report, four-year-old female presenting with easy bruising and petechiae, platelet count 135,000 and normal appearing on smear. Normal PT, PTT, factor 8 and low run activity with prolonged bleeding time. Abnormal aggregation to collagen and ADP but normal aggregation of ristocetin. Platelet function disorder resulting from an abnormality in the platelet 2B3A complex. So remember, Bornoscular is 1B, Glansman is 2B3A. Platelet aggregation will be normal with ristocetin, but not collagen and ADP, the opposite of Bornoscular. Flow will demonstrate decrease in glycoprotein 2B3A receptor. Deficiency in platelet granules, gray platelet syndrome, that's alpha granule deficiency. Case report. 15-year-old boy presenting with recurrent epistaxis. Normal PT, PTT, CBC with normal WBC and hemoglobin counts, but decreased platelets. On smear, platelets reveal no granules, a grayish or bluish tonality, and well-defined edges. Isolated deficiency of platelet alpha granule, the platelets will appear gray on peripheral smear. It may have abnormal aggregation of collagen. Think of it in bleeding patient with quote unquote great platelets on smear. Treatment, platelet transfusions of bleeding. Dense granule deficiency, or D granule deficiency. 15 year old Puerto Rican male with albinism presenting with recurrent epistaxis. Multiple family members with same problem. Normal PT, PTT, prolonged bleeding time, abnormal platelet aggregation, low platelet ADP. The number of dense granules are decreased by immunofluorescence employing quinacrine. The second wave of aggregation in response to ADP and epinephrine will be absent. Seen in Northwest Puerto Rico, defect in HPS1 gene causing albinism, nystagmus, and D granule deficiency. <clears throat> Quebec platelet disorder, case report. 23-year-old woman presenting with history of epistaxis and gum bleeding since childhood. Our coagulation profile is normal, but platelet function testing by platelet aggregation assays show an abnormal aggregation of platelets with epinephrine. Remember that. Seen in delayed bleeding and abnormal porulysis of alpha granules. It's due to increased urokinase type plasminogen activator. We'll have defective aggregation to epinephrine. Treatment, trash free platelets if needed. Shidiak Higashi syndrome, case report. 18-year-old female with albinism and low IQ presenting with easy bruising and epistaxis. Has nystagmus on exam as well as hepatosplenomegaly. She's neutropenic, anemic, thrombocytopenic with leukocytosis and elevated ESR. Bone marrow biopsy reveals myeloperoxid positive inclusions and neutrophils. as precursors as well as in monocytes and lymphocytes. Shidiak Higashi syndrome manifests as, we must remember this, storage platelet defect, albinism, and immune deficiency. As due to lysosomal trafficking regulator list gene defect, and remember, for the hematology boards, we must know all these genes, may transform into the accelerated phase, 
which is massive lymphohistiocytic infiltration of virtually all organ systems. Patients usually succumb to infections. The treatment is either steroids or splenectomy, may slow the accelerated phase, prophylactic antibiotics, and allo stem cell transplant may be curative. This concludes the laboratory hematology and platelet disorders chapters. Thank you.